Gavin, I hear you cry, as with one voice. What is happening with the financial and economic apocalypse that you keep going on about, you keep lecturing us about? Well, here, unusually for me, there is good news. And that is that uh, two of the four horsemen of that apocalypse, they are saddled up and fumbling to get their feet into the stirrups. And I'm referring here to the Silicon Valley bank collapse in America and the associated uh, fall in government bond prices, so the price or, or the value of loans that have been made to uh, the American government. Uh, and uh, But I, I, I hear you ejaculate in unison, what are these four horsemen of the apocalypse? Well, that they are, I, I would classify them uh, as uh, financial institutions, that means banks, insurance companies and pension funds. That's the first horseman, and that one has mounted up. Secondly, uh, bonds and bond prices, that's the second horseman, that one has mounted up. The other two that I don't think are mounted up yet are the asset markets, that's share markets and property markets. And the final one is, the big one, is um, currency, the currency markets, particularly um, inflation and the value of money and the control over the value of money, the control over the economy that central banks exercise. So um, two of those four horsemen are in the saddle and they're getting ready to go. And w w what I want to do, uh, if, what I want to talk about here is... Uh, uh, I want to show you a brief outline of the Silicon Valley bank collapse, explain why it happened, what the implications are, what we're likely to see now. Okay, um, that is from the Wall Street Journal. That just shows you the size of the Silicon Valley bank collapse. I'd never heard of it. I assumed it was just some niche little bank that took in, took in money over the counter for these Silicon Valley tech startups that are making no money. I, I, I'd never have guessed it was so big. It is apparently the, the second biggest bank collapse in American history. So that was the Washington Mutual Bank in 2008 and the Silicon Valley Bank, that one there. You see that circle's just a little bit smaller than uh, the, the one previously. That's a big collapse. Silicon Valley Bank, SVB, they, they're, they're reported everywhere to have been the 16th largest bank in America. Uh, Wikipedia says they were the 18th largest. They're, they're pretty big. They're, they're a big bank. What they specialized in was tech startups. So the tech startups uh, in, in um, California that uh, uh, have negative profits, they're making losses. They're gonna be, gonna be making losses for a decade or two into the future. They've been, they attract money from venture capitalists. They then bank that money with the, um, uh, the, the, the Silicon Valley Bank. Now that was great uh, f for them whilst interest rates were low. And th this is the thing about interest rates. Le interest rates have been absurdly, artificially low. Negative interest rates in, in, in some cases, i.e. Where, where you get paid to borrow money. And borrowing money five, ten years into the future um, costs nothing. This is absurd. It's been caused by central banks pumping money, printing money and lending it into the economy. And then in COVID, basically printing it and spending it in, into the economy um, uh, with the hope of permanently creating economic boom. And what that does is to lower interest rates because it's really easy to borrow money. So you don't, people just don't need to pay uh, a, a lot of interest in order to be able to borrow money. Uh, so they don't. And when you have low interest rates, what that favors is a uh, 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 things, uh, um, speculative ventures that are not going to make money until a long time into the future. What it, what it undermines is ordinary people doing valuable practical jobs. It undervalues people digging ditches, doing plumbing work, um, laying cables. Um, that gets undermined because that brings value now. Uh, what what uh, low interest rates do is to, to uh, um, encourage speculation a long way into the future. If you imagine this, let's say um, if I lend a uh, hundred pounds or a hundred dollars to some um, tech startup that's not going to make profits for 10 years, which would be, um, that would be, um, um, that would be a, a very profitable te tech startup that could promise some profits within 10 years. But if, if I, if I, um, if I lent a uh, hundred dollars to, to, to that company. If there's a 1% interest rate, then that's 1% a year, then effectively I'm lending $100 and I'm foregoing 1% uh, in interest over 10 years, so 110%. But if the interest rate is 10%, 
then over 10 years, uh, that's I'm foregoing the money plus 10 times 10%, so 200%, $200. And uh, uh, when interest rates go up, as they have, the, 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 they've gone up from about a bit under 1% in 2020, or the interest you, you can make on, on a government bond, to about 3.5% now. So they've about they've gone up about 3.5 times over the, over the last three years. So what, what that has meant is that um, you get the, these, these tech startups, they're living off venture capital. They can't make any profits. They're not going to do so until some unknown date in the future. So they go to rich people who want to speculate and they say invest in this is the big thing in the future. It's not going to happen for a decade and a half uh, uh, minimum, but uh, invest in us and then you'll make a, hu a huge amount of money. And that's what they're living on, borrowing money or getting investors in and spending investors' money. So they go to invest to get their money and then they bank it. And who do they bank it with? They bank it with Silicon Valley Bank, who promised all kinds of um, goodies for um, tech startup companies who deposited their money with Silicon Valley Bank. And what that meant was that Silicon Valley Bank had, uh, um, during, during the COVID era, where you were having a, an awful lot of money getting splashed about, basically given away free, pretty much given away free, and ultra low interest rates, interest rates at zero, then um, um, rich speculative investors um, who might want a bit of return on their money, they would say, well, the best return I'm going to get is a return. I'm not going to get any return now. So I'll invest it in something that gives me a, a big return in 10 years' time. And then these companies would take their money into Silicon Valley Bank. And Silicon Valley Bank, between um, 2019 and 2022, it's, um, the, the, the amount of money that it had deposited with it went up from, I think, $62 billion to $173 billion. It, it pretty much trebled in those... Um, in those uh, two or three years, basically during the COVID bonanza. But now, the reason I bought, bought this little chart up is, 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 is to show uh, w what happened when interest rates, now they've gone up a lot higher, and basically the, the borrowing rates in, in America are about 45 maybe 5%. What you can get on a 10-year a government bond, the interest rate the government will give you if you lend, lend to them for 10 years, is about 3.5% per year. And what, what happened... If I, if I just show you this chart, uh, f forget about, the, I don't know who this Jack Farley fellow is, but, but the, 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 ch the chart shows it. What it shows is that as, as the interest rates went up, these, these speculative investors, they were simply not investing in these tech companies anymore. So the tech companies then had to go and um, spend the money that they deposited in, in, in the banks. And that's what was happening. So forget about the losses on securities, the true cause of Silicon Valley Bank banks collapse is cash burn. Money losing companies who banked at SVB were taking money out to fund operations. So money, investors' money that they've banked, they now need to take it out to fund their day-to-day -day operations. They required constant inflows of venture capital, which stopped. And so if you see that chart, that, that's the venture capital um, going up that they're banking with Silicon Valley Bank. And then as interest rates go up and the, the funders dry up, they then have to withdraw that money, and that's what happened. Now, what that then meant was that um, Silicon Valley Bank then had to draw down the money that it that it had stored. When people deposited money with them, they didn't just keep it as cash or dollar notes in a bank vault. They went and bought um, what they thought were safe investments, basically um, government bonds, and those government bonds were... Um, um, considered by regulators to be ultra safe they want to encourage people to, to lend money to the government and um, so that's what they did the problem is that interest rates went up and when interest rates go up the, if you've bought a government bond which is giving you one and a half percent interest a year and then a couple of years later uh, you can buy a new, uh, 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 the same government bond if you buy it from government will give you three and a half percent a year then the government the bond that you bought couple of years ago that's paying one and a half percent per year that is not worth so much money so as interest rates go up your your the value of your bond goes down so that bank then had to sell its bonds in order to pay uh, the customers who were um, pulling money out of the bank to fund their their day-to-day -day business and that meant those banks had to realize losses falls in value on the bonds they were holding 
So um, if I if I share share that next one, Th this is from a, a blog by a fellow called Mish Talky. He's usually he's usually pretty good. You can take a, take a look at him. I don't know who the guy is, um, but that 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 little chart was th what that's showing is not all the bonds that Silicon Valley Bank held, but th the ones that it said it was going to hold until maturity. And it's just showing how the value went down. So that the 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 book value that's the value that they bought them at that was just over a, a, a hundred billion. But the market value, so if they had to sell them on the open market, that was at um, 80 billion. So basically, they'd lost nearly nearly 20% um, of their value. And so when they were have, so customers come in, deposit money over the counter, and then uh, uh, um, uh, the bank then take that money and buy bonds. They think that's safe. And then, then the customers come back and say, actually, we want to draw us our money money out. So the bank then has to sell those bonds, but now it has to sell them at a loss to hand over money to the customers. And then uh, the, all, all of its bonds, suddenly that bank looks insolvent. It's bond, the bonds it's bought are not enough to pay off all of its customers. So the bank looks insolvent. And what that did was to cause um, panic or um, yeah, to, to, to scare uh, other people who had money uh, deposited in that bank, they thought, well, I've got to get my money out because I don't want to be the, the one, the tail end Charlie who can't get his money out. I'll get my money out now. So you had a bank run, everyone trying to get their money out. Uh, but particularly because uh, the, the, the bank said we need to, or they tried, they wanted to raise uh, uh, one and three quarter billion uh, in, in investment funding to be able to, to plug the gap. And they were having trouble doing that. And so, so everyone, everyone's trying to get their money out of the bank, and that caused Silicon Valley Bank just to go into a tailspin, and it um, it, it collapsed, it broke down. Uh, this was a problem to a lot of those businesses because in the States, if you but uh, uh, over here, I think if you put money into a bank and your bank goes bust, the government insures the money you had up to I think it's eighty three thousand pounds. In the States. The government insures uh, money you have in a bank up to a quarter of a million, two hundred and fifty thousand. But most of the the people who were who were depositing money with Silicon Valley Bank, that they they had much much more than a quarter of a million. So um, they if they lost their money, they were going to lose their money. It wasn't insured, and those businesses might go bust. And so so uh, that was that was a problem. I th I think of the one hundred and seventy two billion that the bank supposedly had in deposits. Uh, um, own uh, 165 billion, so the overwhelming majority, 90 odd percent of it, was not insured. Those businesses would simply have lost that money if if the bank went broke. But the question is, why should the government bail them out? What that that's the question that overhangs all of this. Because my view would be, well, these are businesses; they've got a lot of money. The, these are supposed to be people who can take care of themselves. It's not ordinary householders putting in their savings, uh, these people will still be able to live, um, they just won't be able to make such fortunes or they might have to seek new investors. Why should the government, why should the central bank, why should they bail out, why should they ensure see the, some very big deposits that some of these businesses have made? Why is it the government's business to ensure businesses' bank deposits? Uh, th that question looks even more pressing. Again, if you look at that, that Mish Talk blog, uh, if there are no um, Silicon Valley Bank bailouts, will there be financial Armageddon? But, but the, 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 this little table here, what it shows, I don't know if you, if you can see that down the bottom. It basically said that um, all of the, the assets against the deposits meant that um, if everyone withdrew their money at the same time, then uh, uh, they would be able to get um, 78, 79% of their money out. So basically, if everyone went there to take their money out, uh, they would they might lose about a fifth of of their deposits that seems to me you know, i think it seems to most normal people well that's a risk of doing business particularly if you're a big speculative rich tech venture so so the question is why why would the government bail out the rich again they know how unpopular it is they know people don't want it it seems unjust it seems it seems unnecessary what's behind it and this is where I think we have those first two horsemen of the apocalypse mounting up. That's why they did it. I don't want to explain because they, they, they did bail them out. Now, now, now if, if I look at um, the next tab, this is from The Independent. 
Um, th th this is about um, Joe Biden saying Silicon Valley Bank, no losses will be borne by the taxpayer, pay as Biden said. The, 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 there were two parts of the bailout to this bank and uh, suppo supposedly the, the government, Biden and Janet Yellen, the, the, um, the Treasury official, they were both saying that there's going to be no bailout and there certainly was a bailout. The first part is this bit where Joe Biden has reassured Americans that the nation's banking system is safe ahead of the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank was another bank that, that went broke. Quite a few banks have gone, gone broke in the wake of this. So I'll go through that in a second. But the US President also said that no losses will be borne by the taxpayers and instead the money will come from the fees that banks pay into the deposit insurance fund. Basically, um, uh, other banks, 11 other big banks, were squeezed by um, uh, the American government to, to um, insure the deposits with Silicon Valley Bank to make sure that any business who, who had deposited money in Silicon Valley Bank could get every penny uh, back out again. And the, that, that money is going to come from something. That, that money is going to get passed on to the big bank's customers. People like, people like you and me, people with small check accounts, we'll get charged a bit more, we'll get a little bit less interest. It'll cost us a bit more if you ever want to borrow something. So that, that it's going to get passed on to us. So it, might, it won't come through the taxpayer, but it'll, it'll come from the public basically to, to ensure Silicon Valley Bank Bank's customers. Americans can have confidence that the banking system is safe, said Mr. Biden. He, he, he added that the management of the collapsed bank would be fired. Well, yeah, that will hurt. They've taken um, big bonuses and sold off shares they had, I think, a, a, a few weeks, a couple of weeks before the, the bank went broke. I, I forget the timeline, but I think one of them sold about three and a half million worth of uh, shares in the bank before it started going broke. Okay, so that was the first bit for um, to get other banks to uh, uh, guarantee that businesses that had deposited money in Silicon Valley Bank could get all their money out. Now, um, the, the 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 other bit was, um, and this one was quite a quite a good article, unusually for uh, um, the the Wall Street Journal, the the Silicon Valley Bank bailout. And what it talks about there, and the, the highlighted part, is the second bit of the bailout, and that is effectively the the um, the, the Federal Reserve, the, the American Central Bank, basically part of the American government, was going to uh, effectively ensure the value of the assets held by banks. What it was going to do is to say, we will lend you 100% of the value of uh, the, 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 the bonds that you bought at the price when you bought them, not the lower value that they have today. They've gone down in value, you've lost money on them. No, we will make good, we will lend you, if you need it, we will lend you 100% of what you paid for those assets. That is insurance. So, uh, um, and what what uh, uh, what that paragraph said, uh, the Fed is acting as it should as a provider of liquidity to all comers, but it's going further and offering one-year loans to banks against collateral of treasuries and other fixed income assets. The Fed will value these assets at par, which means banks don't have to sell their assets at a loss. The Fed is essentially guaranteeing bank assets that are taking losses because banks took duration risk that Fed policies encouraged. This too is a bailout. So basi basically, the... Um, it's being styled as a loan, but you know, if you lend me, um, if I've bought something and it's, if I if I buy a car and a few years later it's worth less, and you come along to me and you say I will lend you the the brand new value of that car today, I'll snatch your hand off, I'll take the loan, and then I'll go broke, and I've I've taken the money, and you're stuck with the, with the car that you you you're stuck with a loss on the car, and th that's effectively what's happening there. That is insuring. Um, that's, that's the government um, acting as an insurer or, or a straightforward bailout against any losses that those banks might make, make on the assets they hold. And this has been put quite well by this um, fella. Uh, I think this is a financial advisor, this Michael Lebovitz fella, don't know who he is, uh, quotes, this is not a bailout. So lending $1 against 80 cents of collateral is the normal course of business. Stop urinating down my back and telling me it's raining. I think that puts it pretty well. So, so, so don't be fooled by, by government lies. The, this Silicon Valley Bank was bailed out. Its customers were bailed out and its assets were bailed out. It was bailed out. Even if the managers get fired, this was a bailout. And the question is why? 
why why would government feel it has to do this for a bank when the, the most people are going to lose anyway is about 20 percent of the money they've handed over the counter in excess of a quarter of a million which is insured by the government anyway why would a government need to do that it doesn't need to do that what's the reason for it uh, i think the reason for it is because government needs to defend the bond price it needs to keep control of the interest rate that it has to pay when people lend money to government. This is government uh, mm -hmm. um, trying to make it easy to, to keep borrowing money because it knows it's going to need to. American, uh, Amer all governments these days live on borrowed money, massive amounts, unsustainable amounts of borrowed money, and they're worried about infection or, or lo losing their credit rating. And they should be worried about that because it's not only Silicon Valley Bank. This is happening uh, across the Western world. The other bank that's now coming under pressure is Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse, this BBC story from a few hours ago, Credit Suisse shares hit as investor fears reignite. Credit Suisse's share price has fallen by more than 10% and stock markets have edged lower despite attempts to calm fears about a crisis in the banking sector. The troubled Swiss lender has secured 45 billion lifeline from the countries from the Swiss central bank. Actually, its price has not gone down. Uh, over the last um, few weeks, that share price has gone down by 30, but by a third, not by 10%. That bank is in trouble. Similarly, you, 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 you've, there have been a lot of problems with a lot of other banks. I mean, if I go further down this article, the Bank of First Republic fell 25% on Friday, and stock markets in the UK and France and Germany all opened higher on Friday, but have since fallen. Uh, that, that there are, uh, if I go to, to this tab, now th this Wikipedia, th this is a Wikipedia article, it's just about um, March 2023 United States bank failures, and um, if I go through this highlighted bit, uh, um, shares of First Republic Bank fell by 67%, so that's, that's one bank. Th th these are um, smaller banks, and uh, smaller regional banks, these are the ones that, that are getting hit, they're more vulnerable. And on, uh, and on March 16th, it received a 30 billion lifeline uh, in the form of deposits from a number of major US banks on top of a 70 billion financing facility provided by JP Morgan. And then Western Alliance Bank Corporation shares fell 82% and PacWest Bank Corp was down 52% before their trading was halted. Moody's downgraded its outlook on the US banking system to negative. And then you have it also downgraded the credit uh, ratings of several regional banks, including Western Alliance, First Republic, Intrust Bank, Comerica, UMB Financial Corporation, and Zions Bank Corporation. Now, th 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 this is this is one of the problems that um, it is the smaller banks that, are get, that, that will get hit f hit first. Uh, Silicon Valley Bank was quite a big bank, but the smaller banks they're least least able to deal with those shocks. They can't spread them across the system and then start um, buying new bonds at the high, higher interest rate uh, from the central government. Um, that is going to be a wipeout of smaller banks and a concentration of banking within fewer and bigger banks. And, and this is why, if you can see that chart, that is an index of um, US banks. You see the price there going from a bit under uh, 500 uh, down to a bit over 350, a bit under 400. So, so they've lost a, a, a bit over uh, one fifth of their value, just the banks in general. And the, the effect of that is uh, to, to, to make uh, bank customers flee to safety. They'll say, well, I'm, I've got my money deposited with a small bank. I don't feel safe here. I think I'll take it to a big bank like JP Morgan. And that is what is happening. According to the Financial Times, large banks, are, large US banks, inundated with new depositors as smaller lenders face turmoil. Now, what appears to be happening is the government getting scared that if they were, if they let um, Silicon Valley Bank go down, then other banks will get scared as well. What they want, what, what I suspect they want, is for other bankers to get careless and to carry on doing what they're doing, which is to say, well, let's take a lot of really irresponsible risks now and uh, we can make big money by, by taking risks now. If it all goes wrong, then the central bank and the government will bail us out. So we win or uh, we win either way or we certainly we, we don't lose. Um, 
if they were to let Silicon Valley Bank go down, other bankers would get scared. They think, well, we might be on the hook for all these losses. We might get prosecuted. We might might have an angry mob out to get us. So we'd better not trust our investment in government bonds. And then a lot of other banks would pull out of government bonds and it would undermine the value of government bonds. It would undermine people's willingness to invest in government bonds. It would um, reduce the control over the bond market that um, uh, 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 central banks have. And I think that's really what, what it's about. If they let SVB go down, it spreads fear, and then that panic prevents the central banks from keeping control of the bond market, their ability to borrow money. And that's what I think it's about. So to, um, I mean, to, to recap, first you get uh, low interest rates, low interest rates that are absurdly low interest rates that have been going on for about 15 years, they um, inflated the value of bonds. So the lower the interest rate, the higher the value of, 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 of the bond. And that, that in, so, so the value of Amer particularly American government bonds uh, became very high. There was a, a bond bubble, effectively. And then as interest rates, um, as interest rates fell, investors started to say, well, is there a lot of point investing in these bonds at such low interest rates, why not sink my money into um, speculative ventures where I'm, I'll see massive profits? It might be a way down the road, but I can't grow my money anywhere else anyway, so I might as well let it sit in a, in a speculative tech venture that it will at least have big gains um, uh, at some stage, which I can't get uh, uh, if interest rates remain low on things like bonds at the moment. So more and more money went into these tech speculative ventures and then uh, then as inflation and interest rates went up then that process reversed so that um, it became exponentially um, more expensive costlier for venture capitalists to stick money into these businesses that are only going to make money many years into the future because the interest rate is getting compounded year after year after year and it's not worth it to them they start standing back and saying no we're not investing in these venture venture tech companies so the tech companies that they they then have to go to their um to their banks and start drawing down money that they've deposited there from previous uh, venture capitalist in, in investors and uh, that then forces um, banks like the silicon valley bank to sell the bonds which it has invested its depositors money in in order to meet the withdrawals that, that are coming and that selling those bonds that then crystallizes it realizes losses on those bonds as those bonds have fallen in price as the interest rate on those bonds has, has, has gone up and that then threatens that bank with insolvency and the, the federal reserve it then panics and, uh, and about those um uh, partial losses at the, even though those, those losses look small they don't want to spread fear they don't want other banks to start pulling out of bonds so they say no we're going to keep calm in the market we will bail out this bank and that basically that basically is what happened i think the effects are going to be threefold the first effect is going to be uh, 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 money moving into big banks so you will get fewer banks and they will get bigger and they will become too big to fail so the, the central government if they get into trouble central government will have no choice whatever but to bail them out at any cost. That's already happening. Small banks failing, their, the assets on their books have fallen in value, they have no other protection, they're looking insolvent, customers are panicking and they want to stick their money into supposedly nice, safe, big banks that are diversified and uh, which are not big enough to withstand these, uh, what are currently quite small shocks. The, the, the second thing is that it is not going to end here. The, 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 the real problem that Silicon Valley Bank had was its customer base. It, the customer base was an outlier. It was at the fringes of low interest rate policy. As long as you have really low interest rate, uh, 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 speculative ventures that are not going to make money for many years, they become attractive because you've, you invest money in there. That small rate of interest over 10 years, it still doesn't stack up to much. Once the interest rate starts going up a lot, as it has, as it is still going up, that means that it's no longer, it becomes a, a lot more expensive to lend 
uh, over 10 years because you're getting that interest rate, 5%, 5%, 5%, year after year after year. And uh, uh, that is... Um, that 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 is why those tech ventures were um, the first to, to, to feel the pinch, but the, there are plenty of other. The entire Ameri world economy, the Western world economy, is stuffed with debt, and there are plenty of other businesses that are relying on debt. Loads of them, zombie businesses that are not really making very much money, but they've been able to survive on cheap debt, low interest rates, they can borrow money, it funds them, it keeps them going. And they've been able to um, take on very low, um, de very, low uh, very low interest rate debt in order to, to buy back their own shares so they can um, uh, concentrate the, the, the dividends, the profits among, among fewer people. And that is based, and so they've accumulated, they've stuffed themselves with debt. They are going to get into problems and now that the interest rate has risen up, they won't be able to roll over those bonds. They won't be able to afford to pay the higher interest rates if they want to roll over those, bond, those bonds again and take on new bonds when the old ones have to be repaid. So th there are going to be more problems. It, it's going to spread more widely. And, and when that happens, that contagion, it won't just be the banks that these businesses are deposited with. It will be the big insurance companies, the pension funds, the way... Pension funds make money to give to their um, to, to the pensioners that, that, who invest with them. Is um, they, they do what's called swaps. They basically they'll go to the banks like Silicon Valley Bank and they'll say, "All right, if you're worried about interest rates going up, pay us some money, and we will take we will take the risk of loss off your hands." And then supposedly those pension funds that that they um, they make money out of that deal, but. Uh, uh, with interest rates rising like that, you're going to see a lot of those pension funds, a lot of those, those insurance companies that insure banks against losses like that. They're going to have losses on their books and then uh, a central government is going to have to come in and bail them out. Are, 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 are um, uh, central governments going to allow pension funds to go broke so that pension, pensioners are on the breadline? I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think they can. If they're bailing out businesses, if they're bailing out banks, they're going to have to bail out pensioners. And, and those bailouts will be a lot bigger. Now, the, the third thing, the third thing um, that is likely to happen as a result of this is that um, central governments will get faced with um, big, two really big bad choices. One is to keep raising interest rates, in which case you will get more bank failures, and then they have to bail out more banks. The other approach is to uh, um, to stop fighting inflation and to say no, we're going to give up the fight on inflation, and we're going to uh, uh, again start printing money and putting it into the economy in order to keep these banks and these businesses alive. Keeping these banks and businesses alive is more important than fighting inflation. But that eventually comes back at you because the inflation goes up and up and up, and then it, and then the economy breaks down that way. And I think they're going to make the second choice. I think central banks are going to say, we're going to go easy on this fight against inflation. We're going to allow inflation to rise. We're not going to fight it because if we do, it will um, drive banks out of business. It will create um, uh, business crises that we can't handle. So we will let this, this, this is not new in history. We will let inflation rip because we don't want to force the tough medicine on society of fighting it. That, that incidentally has, has already happened. Uh, the the, the, the um, markets were, were expecting by September uh, uh, of this year that uh, interest rates in the States would go up by another 0.6%. And now they're expecting them to go down by 0.6% by September. So uh, um, uh, it, it, that, 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 that's the, that's the, the market expect expectation of what's going to happen. doesn't mean that that's what will happen, but these people probably have a, a pretty closer idea than uh, the likes of the rest of us. And if you want to see um, what, what this looks like, let me play you this exchange between... Um, this is between uh, oh, the, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, that's Jerome Powell, Powell, and Senator Elizabeth Warren. Senator Elizabeth Warren has put forward the idea of modern monetary theory, otherwise known as magic money tree, the idea that government should just be able to 
print money instead of ta instead of taxing. So if it needs to spend money on on some government program, it can just print the money to do it. Of course, you're going to get inflation if you get that. But y you watch her; she's nuts. This fella, um, Powell, um, he's a sad figure in a um, hopeless situation. He loses this little exchange. I'll just play it. Hold on. We are taking the, the only measures we have to bring inflation down. And putting two million people out of work is just part of the cost, and they just have to bear it. Will, they, will, will, will working people be better off if, if we just walk away from our jobs and, and inflation remains 5 6 percent? Let me ask you about what happens if you do this. Since the end of World War II, there have been 12 times in which the unemployment rate has increased by one percentage point within one year, exactly what you're aiming to do right now. How many of those times did the U.S. economy avoid falling into a recession? You know, it's it's not as black and white as it very, Just very looking at the numbers. It actually yeah, no, no. is pretty black Alan Blinder has written a book on this. And, there have been 12 times that we've seen a one-point increase in the, in the unemployment rate in a year. That's exactly what your Fed report has put out as the projection and the plan based on how you're going to keep raising these interest rates. How many times did the economy fail to fall into a recession after doing that out of 12 times? I think the number is zero. I think the number is zero. That's exactly right. Okay, he's right. She's nuts, but she wins. She wins that debate. She's going to keep winning. She's basically saying, don't fight inflation. Don't put up interest rates. You keep the try and keep the economy booming so people can keep their jobs. Inflation doesn't matter. She's wrong, but she'll win. As a result of that, we are going to see the other horsemen of the financial apocalypse just starting to saddle up. Currently, it's uh, the, the the financial institutions, some some of the banks, and also the bond prices that that they are saddling up and trying to get their feet in the stirrups. The other two, that's asset markets, share markets, and property markets they will start to fall before before very long or they will start to get volatile they will start saddling up maybe w within a year i would say and similarly control o over the currency control over inflation particularly if ladies like elizabeth warren win this this matters this is or well, the reason this matters it's not just nerdy financial stuff the reason it matters is because um the Western economies are so stuffed with debt, they're stu so bloated with debt, that if inflation goes up, it's going to force up interest rates anyway. It will, it will do that whether you, whether you like it or not, because no one is going to lend a 1% if inflation is at 10%. It will force up real interest rates one way or the other, and, and that will collapse, effectively collapse this, um, the, the, the debt bubble. And, and because the economies are based on Western economies are based on debt bubbles that will collapse those economies. It's well, it's not going to happen tomorrow or, ne or next week. It's going to take years to happen. But um, unusually, I, I think I, I, I would s stick to the um, the the the, the uh, very rash, foolish, reckless prediction I made about timing. I said that I thought sometime after the middle of this decade, perhaps 2026, 2027, I think people will see that the economy, our economies have um, stage four cancer and that that will ripple through into political, social breakdown, breakdown of the system sometime around the end of this decade. So I, I might extend the deadline out a bit um, t towards the, the further end of what I was saying. So 2027, for people to start realising that the economy is um, falling over, and maybe about uh, 2031, something like that, 32, when um, the system itself just collapses and breaks down, where the state system breaks down. That's, I could be wrong, but to my amazement, um, um, my, my foolishness in making that prediction at the moment, um, it well, uh, d doesn't seem apparent. My, uh, that prediction seems to be um, keeping going. Uh, and what that then means, just to repeat, that matters for the rest of us because when the state system breaks down all the problems that we have at the moment that the social problems we have particularly the problem of invasion they will be seen in a very radically different light when the, again i said again when the state breaks down people will then seek we will then seek 
to meet our primal need for law by clubbing together voluntarily in order to voluntarily submit ourselves to law in order to be able to live and trade safely and when we do that we are not going to to do it along the lines of multiculturalism no none of us no english person will have any incentive to do any such thing and the separation will harden along ethnic lines and uh, that is when uh, the, the, the problem of invasion will get solved because conditions in uh, the, the foreigner foreign areas of our country they will plummet fast and those people will be amenable to a ticket home uh, and that is why i do this nerdy stuff of, of watching what's happening with the economy because i think that this the whole problem with the invasion is not going to be solved by government action it is going to be solved by government collapse and that collapse will be an economic collapse and that is what i'm trying to outline here how things are going with that economic collapse, that economic apocalypse that I have talked about. So I hope I've been of some help here and it hasn't been too boring. But the good news is economic collapse, it is coming, it is on schedule. Those four, not all of the four horsemen of the apocalypse are mounted in their saddles yet. Two of them are and they're getting ready to go and the other ones will saddle up before too long. Thank you very much.